The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, friends, for real smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! This is Don Wilson with an important question. Is the cigarette you're smoking fresh, really fresh? If it's a Lucky, I know it is. For Luckies are definitely fresher. Prove that to yourself. Light up a Lucky and see what a difference that freshness makes to your smoking enjoyment. Notice how much more you get from the cigarette that tastes better in every way. Not only fresher, but cleaner and smoother, too. Yes, Luckies do taste better because they're made of fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. They taste better because they're made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. And then, of course, Luckies taste better because they come to you fresh. They're even extra tightly sealed to keep that freshness in. So be happy. Go lucky. For real smoking enjoyment, ask for Lucky Strike. Get the better taste you want in a cigarette and get it fresh. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike! Lucky strike! The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours for a on Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, Jack Benny is in San Francisco, California, where he's making a personal appearance at the Kern Theater. So let's go backstage where we find Rochester in Jack's dressing room. There's no business like show business. There's no business I know. Every time they sell another ticket, Mr. Benny's blue eyes start to glow. <laughs> but when he looks and sees a seat that's empty, the little teardrops, they start to flow. <laughs> There's no business like show. Uh-oh, look what time it is. Mr. Benny will be off stage in a minute. I'll put everything he needs on his dressing table. Yep, that'll do it. There's the cold cream for his makeup, a washcloth for his face, a brush for his suit, and a comb for his morale. <laughs> Let's see, what else? Oh yes, his glasses. He always puts them on when he comes back to the dressing room. I wish he'd forget his pride and wear them on the stage. Yesterday he did two shows with his back to the audience. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. But when he took his bow, what a target. <laughs> Even the manager ran up and kicked him. <laughs> I haven't seen that many people on stage since Quo Vadis. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I better lay out a clean shirt for him. Yeah, this white one will be all right. Hmm, I know Mr. Benny isn't a spendthrift, but I do wish he'd buy real cufflinks. Imagine putting a toothpick through the cup and sticking an olive on each end. <laughs> <laughs> this even amazed me And I've been with him for 15 years Hello, Rochester Oh, hello, boss How'd the show go? Oh, fine, fine That's good I'm glad there weren't any empty seats How did you know? Your mascara isn't running <laughs> Rochester, I don't cry when there's an empty seat After all, I didn't take this personal appearance engagement to make money. You didn't? No. You may not understand this, Rochester, but every so often a, a performer must satisfy his artistic temperament. I'm playing these three weeks in San Francisco merely as a release uh, for my talents. You understand what I mean? Well, is this the same kind of release that your talents got from Warner Brothers? <laughs> No, no, this is something different. By the way, Rochester, where are my slippers? Right here, boss. 
Well, don't just stand there pointing at them. Take them off. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Rochester, please go out and get me a sandwich with a corned beef on rye. And don't forget the mustard and pickles. Okay, and I better bring back some olives, too. Olives? Why? The pimento fell out of your couplings. <laughs> All right, go get my sandwich. Yes, sir. See, I've got quite a while before I have to be back on stage. I think I'll freshen up my makeup. First, I better take this old stuff off. Now, let's see. Where is that jar? Oh, here it is. Yeah, that ought to be enough. Hey, this stuff really takes the makeup off. And in that fancy jar, no one would ever guess it's Crisco. <laughs> I wonder if I should shave before I... Hmm, look at my eyes. They're bluer than the thumb of a cross-eyed carpenter. <laughs> I, be I better put on some more makeup instead of talking to myself all evening. <laughs> Come in. Well, if it isn't Mary Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells, and boy, are you a schmo. <laughs> hmm. Got any more poetry you want to throw my way? Never mind, but Mary, did you catch my last performance? I caught more than that. Huh? I was in the front row when you took your bow. Here, put it back on your head. <laughs> I'm glad you caught it this time. Yesterday, a lady brought it back and wanted me to autograph it. Jack, you mean she kept your toupee? She was a midget. She thought it was a mink stole. <laughs> you and your long sideburns. Never mind. Now, look, Mary, I want to finish my makeup, so excuse me. Uh, wait a minute, Jack. Your jar of cold cream, it doesn't have any label on it. I know. Gee, it looks good. Smells good, too. Who recommended it, Percy Westmer or Max Factor? Betty Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Crocker? Uh-huh. But she tells you how to cook and fry and... Uh... Wait a minute. Let me smell that again. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I never thought that Buck Benny would turn out to be the Cisco Kid. <laughs> Crisco Kid! <laughs> She's even got an underline. <laughs> I know is it works anyway. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Bob Crosby. Hi, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hi, Bob. See, I didn't mean to keep you waiting, Mary, but I had a few errands to do. Waiting? Oh, I meant to tell you, Mary, I want you and Bob to sing a song together on my radio show. Oh, I don't want to do that. After all, I haven't got the voice of a great singer. Well, I've got the name of one, so let's take a stab at it. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I just got a letter from him this morning. You know Bing is in Paris. Oh, yes, I read about that. See, Paris in the spring. Gosh, how I'd like to be there. Say, Bob, wasn't it in Paris last year when Bing was taking a nap in the park and a French policeman arrested him there? Yep, but this time he's taken some precautions to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, what did he do? He bought France. <laughs> Bought friends? You're surprised, huh? I didn't think Maurice Chevalier would sell. <laughs> well, so much for international news. You know, kids, I'm really getting a kick out of doing a stage show here in San Francisco. It's nice to get away from... Excuse me. Hello? Here's your party. Go ahead, Hollywood. Hello, Jack. This is Don Wilson. Oh, what is it, Don? Jack, I have the most wonderful idea I just had to call you. 
What is it, Don? Well, you know how the entire movie industry is so excited about these new three-dimensional pictures? Yes. Well, I have an idea for a 3D picture that's bound to be absolutely sensational. What is it? Well, the opening scene takes place on a tobacco plantation in Goldsboro, North Carolina. No. And the scene is so realistic, the people in the audience will think they're sitting right in a field of that light, that fine, that naturally mild tobacco. Continue, Don, you fascinate me. <laughs> now, this is going to be a musical. The Sportsman's Quartet comes out and sings a love song to a Lucky Strike cigarette. No kidding. Take it, fellas. <laughs> Good thing rolled up in one. You have a fresher taste. It's true. You're smoother and you are clean through and through. So round and firm, so fully, fully packed. They must have made you just. My darling, you were meant for me. Not a puff is rough, better tasting, sure enough. I was meant for you, and only you will do. You are the best, and that is true. Every lucky strike is free from loose ends. Full of smoking pleasure, they please my friends. And so to you, my love. I have learned to tear, now it's easy to compare. You're the smoke I like. What a cigarette, fresher tasting, you can bet. So we say, get a carton now today, for Lucky Strike was meant for you. Don, that sounds wonderful, but remember, with 3D pictures, you have to give everybody in the audience a pair of glasses. Not for this picture. We're going to give everybody an ashtray. <laughs> oh, good, good. Now, Don, we'll talk about it when I get back in San Francisco. Okay. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Don. Here's your sandwich, boys. Thanks, Rochester. Say, this is a nice thick one. Yeah, when I told the man in the delicatessen it was for you, he put in an extra piece of meat. Gee, he must have liked me. Put in an extra piece of corned beef, huh? No ham! <laughs> hmm. Not whom, ham! <laughs> I heard, I heard. <laughs> Would you like some more mustard on it? No, no, this is fine the way it is. Gee, that sandwich looks good. Sure does. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be eating like this in front of you kids. Oh, Rochester. You want me to run across the street and get some more sandwiches? No, see if there's an empty dressing room. I'll go and eat in there. <laughs> Don't put yourself out, Jack. Come on, Mary. I'll take you to dinner. Okay, Bob. Thanks. You can come along, too, Jack. No, thanks. I better stay here and relax. So long, kids. Bye, Jack. So long. Rochester, I'll have to get dressed pretty soon, so lay out my clothes, will you, please? Okay. I think that during my next show, there'll be some critics out front, so I want you to sneak out in the audience, and when I tell my jokes, laugh it up. Again? <laughs> what do you mean, again? Roger, I don't ask you to... Come in. Hello, Jack. Hello, Rochester. Well, Fred! Fred out! <laughs> Well, Fred, this is a surprise. Really? When did you get in town? Last night. Last night? Well, why, uh, why didn't you call me at my hotel? You mean you're staying at one that has phones? 
Well, no, but there's a candy store in the lobby that takes messages. Oh, I see. Gosh, it's good to see you, Fred. Tell me, what are you doing here in San Francisco? Well, Jack, I'm here on business. Business? Yes, you see, Portland needs a mink, a mink stole, and I've heard there's a midget here who wants to sell one. Oh, you were nearly as bad as Mary there for a second. <laughs> I had some of the fur in my mouth. <laughs> Say, boss, as long as Mr. Allen's in town, why don't you put him on your stage show? Well, thank you, Rochester, but I couldn't very well go out on a stage now. I haven't got any material. Well, don't you have any of your old vaudeville routines left? Well, if I did, I'd be on television. <laughs> It'll be great if you could join me on my stage show, Fred. Well, I'd uh, really love to, Jack, but I have to rush back to Hollywood. I've been offered the lead in a new picture. A new picture? Uh -huh. No dimension. It's a new thing that's coming out. <laughs> when it comes out, you don't dimension the whole thing. <laughs> but, uh... So far, that's better than what we've got written here. <laughs> In this picture, Jack, yeah. I play the part of a test pilot in Los Angeles. I see. The picture is called Breaking the Smog Barrier. <laughs> it's a shame you can't stay over, Fred, so we could appear together. It'd be like old times. Say, Mr. Barry, did you and Mr. Allen once do an act together in Vaudeville? We sure did, Rochester. We had a lot of fun in those days. Oh, gosh. Remember, Jack, how we'd always celebrate with a big dinner at Lindy's every time we got a job? Yeah, we'd always get the best. Shrimp cocktail, turtle soup, chef salad. Filet mignon, stuffed potatoes, strawberry shortcake. Then I'd top it all off with a big glass of Ovaltine. Ovaltine? Well, he wanted to be asleep when the check came. <laughs> Those were the good old days. I'll never forget the time we rehearsed and polished our act for weeks. And we went to see Mickey Rockford, the biggest booking agent in New York. Come on, Fred. I think Mr. Rockford's office is down the hall. Hey, it's crowded in here, Jack. Yeah, I guess we'll have to talk to the secretary. Miss, uh, we'd like to see Mr. Rockford. Do you have an appointment? Appointment? Yes. We're uh, Benny and Allen. Benny and Allen? Yes. Don't you recognize us? Why? Is there a reward? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, uh, you don't understand, girlie. We do a vaudeville act. Really? Which one throws the fish? <laughs> Say, that is clever. <laughs> Miss, you ought to be in show business yourself. Me in show business? Yes. I know a magician who saws a woman in half. You'd look better in two pieces. <laughs> Take it easy, Fred. Look, look, miss, we don't, we don't want to argue. We'd just like to see our agent, Mr. Rockford. Well, first I'll need some information. Now, uh, what's the name of your act again? Alan and Benny. <laughs> I thought you said it was Benny and Alan. Well, at two o'clock, our billing changes. <laughs> well, what kind of an act do you do? Violin, clarinet, and snappy patter. And where have you played? Oh, all over. Well, where? <laughs> well, just, just tell her the important dates, Jack. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we did a week in Sow Belly, Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> a week in Loose Tooth, Arizona. <laughs> Three days in Stagnant Water, New Mexico. <laughs> and we also played The Palace here in New York. Sow belly, loose tooth, stagnant water in the palace. Well, at least you worked your way up. No, we played the palace first. <laughs> well, Mr. Rockford's busy. 
busy right now, so just have a seat and I'll call you. All right. Oh, um, by the way, Mr. Allen, I don't mean to be personal, but are you an American citizen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I got these slant eyes from pulling off a tight derby. <laughs> Come on, Fred, let's sit down. Okay. Yes? Yes. Oh, very well, Mr. Rockford. Oh, boys, Mr. Rockford will see you now. Good, good. Come on, Fred, let's go in. Okay. Well, come on in, fellas. Come on in. Close the door. Sit down. Thank you. Mr. Rockford, I'm Jack Benny. This is Fred Allen. That's right, Mr. Rockford. Remember, you booked our act in the palace seven years ago. Oh, yes. What business are you in now? <laughs> well, we're still in show business. Yes, and we thought you could book us. Please, fellas. Our new act is sensational. At least give us a chance, Mr. Rockford. Yes, all we need is one good break, you know. I gave you a break when I put you in Lowe's Flatbush. <laughs> Some break. They opened with Fink's Mules, then Major Doty's Dogs came out, then Manny's Monkeys, then Powers Dancing Elephants. So what? Well, by the time we came out, we looked like the last two passengers on Noah's Ark. <laughs> well, look, boys, I'm very busy. And Please, uh... Mr. Rockford, just listen to our opening number. It'll only take a second. All right, but before you... Oh, excuse me. Here, come in. Mr. Rockford, here's the 10% commission I owe you for booking my act last week. Oh, thank you. Oh, wait a minute. The cute boy. Sonny, what's your name? Eddie Cantor. <laughs> Eddie Cantor? Potatoes are cheaper. Tomatoes are cheaper. Now's the time to fall in love. <laughs> Mr. Rockford, how about listening to our, our new act? Oh, all right, if you insist. Uh, ready with your clarinet, Fred? Ready. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> One, two. Boyfriend. Oh, Mr. Allen. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Benny? Have you heard that they're making women's bathing suits out of spun glass? Women's bathing suits out of glass? Well, that's worth looking into. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, Mr. Allen, if you will. Mr. Benny, yes, I... Mr. Allen. Uh, oh, pardon me. Uh, I love music. So do I. Music once saved my uncle's life. Well, how did music save your uncle's life? They played the Star Spangled Banner just as he was sitting in the electric chair. <laughs> Take it, Mr. Allen. <laughs> you don't have to finish it, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Mr. Allen. I want you to meet my new girl. Her name is Well Enough. Why do you call your girl Well Enough? Because I want the boys to leave Well Enough alone. <laughs> How about the finale, Mr. In unison? All right. Uh, <laughs> Well, 
Mr. Rockford, what do you think of it? <laughs> Wait till he gets his head out of the drawer. <laughs> Maybe he's looking for a contract. Fellas. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 Mr. Rockford. To tell you the truth, fellas, I'm confused. The, the whole act leaves me cold. It, it's neither fish nor fowl. Well, that's funny. The last agent we went to thought it was both. <laughs> Well, Mr. Rockford, you mean you can't book us anywhere? Well, actually, I don't have a thing open for a double. Uh, have either of you considered doing a single? What? And break up the act? Why, we've been together for years. You can't split Benny and Alan. It's ridiculous. We're more than just a team. We're partners, friends, buddies. Why, we'd rather starve than let anything come between us. Well, that's a shame because I've got an opening for a single in Scranton for $15 a week. I'll take it. <laughs> well, if that's the way you feel, I'll, I'll take it for $14 a week, Mr. Rockford. <laughs> Fred, you steal a job away from your partner, your buddy, your friend? Some friend. What did you ever do for me? Why, you puff-eyed ingrate. For years, you, we've lived off my violin, my brains, my talent, my joke. And my money. <laughs> and you, listen, you miser, as for your violin playing, I have heard cleaner notes from a toothless Russian sipping borscht. <laughs> <laughs> you are just lucky you've had me and my clarinet. Clarinet. The only way you could make a living with that clarinet is if you put a nail on the end of it and went out in the park. <laughs> Mr. Rockford, rather than let you hire this no-talented wage cutter, I'll take the job for $10 a week. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll take it for eight. I'll take it for five. Well, I'll take it for three. Well, I'll take it for nothing. So will I. Well, at that price, I can afford both of you. <laughs> yes, did you hear that? We're working. Fred! Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, our forests are among our most vital resources. Last year, through carelessness, forest fires destroyed millions of acres of valuable timber. This shameful waste weakens America. Protect our forests. Don't toss away lighted matches or cigarettes. Make sure every campfire is completely out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, nothing. No, nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike me. Fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. I suppose there's no way of telling just how many different reasons there are for smoking. But this is certain. All those reasons add up to enjoyment. And for real smoking enjoyment, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. That's partly because Lucky's are made better, made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Yes, made better to taste better. And there's another important reason for Lucky's better taste. It's fine tobacco. Long strands of fine, light, and mild tobacco with a wonderful taste and an aroma that's even better. For LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So friends, switch to the cigarette that gives you more real smoking enjoyment because it tastes better. Be happy, go lucky. Next time, every time, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another program, and we'll be with you next week at the same time. And Fred, it was nice reminiscing. Oh, say, Jack, we forgot to tell him about the time we played in Burning Stump, Arkansas. <laughs> remember that insulting audience? Oh, yes. I remember while we were doing our act, the audience threw pennies on the stage, and you complained to the manager. And when they stopped, you complained to the manager. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Fred, let's go out and get a cup of coffee. Okay, Good night, Jack. folks.
Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned now for the Amos and Andy Show, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.